Hey guys, how's it going? I just got back home from a trip down to the garden center. While I was down there, I posted a bunch of stories and a really pretty picture of a plant on Instagram. Just showing you guys what I was looking at because it's January, like what is there to see at the garden center other than house plants? But I went out to the greenhouse and there was some just beautiful stuff out there. It's such a good time of year to go visit garden centers because you can see like maybe what your yard is lacking you can go and see beautiful colored like beautifully colored branches berries on on plants um really neat evergreens and you can think like oh my garden is missing this i need to add this stuff in this next year um so i did that today i just took some time and just looked through some things i was looking for some sedum that, that was my whole goal i did find that um because i do have a project i want to use that in but I ended up with some other pretty things too. So I thought I would just do a little haul video and show you guys what I ended up bringing home. I didn't bring a ton home, but what I do have I think is really pretty. So I'm gonna gather it up, it's right behind me in the back seat and I'm gonna grab some soil because I do have some repotting to do. Ah, oh, there's some of it. One of Benjamin's books. So we are up in the front sun porch, Russell and I, he's checking everything out. Uh, it's really nice up here, it's really warm because it's sunny out, but it's kind of breezy and chilly outside. So it's a really great day to do some new plants. This is also where I've been keeping the Sempervivum arrangements. So these are the scents that I took out of the wreath and kind of revitalized them and put them in these really low gray containers. I think they turned out so pretty and they're doing really well up here. This is not a heated room. Sempervivums are really cold tolerant. So they've been just really happy and I hardly water them at all. Okay, so I hope that the lighting is not too bad up here. It does sound really echoey, so I might rethink this location for future videos, but I wanna show you the containers that I got first. So first one is this white glazed low bowl. I really like low bowls, especially for succulent arrangements, and that's probably what I'm gonna be doing with this one. I also like that it comes with a plug. So you can either leave the plug in and like not have a draining container or you can take it out and let it drain. I like to have the option. Next container, I think these are all from the same line. It's called Milk House Vintage Series. Um, this is a line that my mom just brought into the garden center and I think it's just so cute. I just love it. It looks great with green foliage. The contrast is beautiful. So I've got one with a chicken because I thought that that was really cute. And look at the handle, nice wood handle. I think I'm gonna put one of my hellebores in that one. Then I got the number one, number two, and number three size buckets because I thought that that would make a really pretty spring like trio of con containers, <laughs> like with pansies and things later on. But today I think I'm just gonna plant one hellebore in this container. So the whole idea is just to have these two planted and I'm gonna probably keep them in here maybe about where Russell is at right now. <laughs> Russell, what are you doing, buddy? And then I grabbed a bag of potting mix in the barn so that I could pot these up really quick. So now I wanna show you the plants and I did show you quite a few of these for those of you who follow me on Instagram and watch my stories. Um, I go down to the garden center all the time. Like, I don't wanna say every day, but pretty close. And whenever they get something new in, I try to like snap pictures or do stories about it or something. So you may have already seen some of these. So let's talk about the obvious first. I was not expecting to find these in the greenhouse today. So this is a hellebore called Gold Collection Jasper. These are a really great shade loving plant that have like evergreen to semi evergreen foliage. Usually here in Eastern Oregon zone five, I have to cut the foliage back because it looks pretty bad by this time of year like this looks nothing like my hellebores out in the garden. In fact, when we're done here, I'll go show you. But they are really wonderful plants. This one is, trying to get a uh, focus on it, I hope you can see, is a zone four, so hardy to negative 30 degrees, and it grows about 12 inches by 12 inches. So I got two of those. I've gotta clean that one up a little bit. See, it's got some kind of wonky looking leaves. Um, this one is like perfection. Love it. Moving on, I did buy a new four inch container full of string of pearls. I thought that this one looked extra healthy. It's got a lot of like tendrils coming down. I don't know if that's what you call them, little branches, tendrils, whatever. Vines, I think that's maybe it. That's a vining plant, right? 
Let me kind of lay it out here. Isn't that just so pretty? I do think I'm going to use this in this uh, white bowl in some capacity. Not sure yet exactly. Um, they do, did get in bigger ones, like great big ones, but I just didn't think I would need that big of one for this project. So, so pretty. I also picked up a string of bananas because this one was amazing. It was super full. You pick it up here. I think it's in a six inch hanging basket. It's really hard to put these on the floor. Yeah. But I always love to have either a string of pearls or a string of bananas, something that will really be a nice drape over the side of a container. And they both have a really interesting texture, which I love. And then moving on to my little box here, I've got a donkey's tail sedum in a six inch, I think that might be an eight inch hanging basket right there. Um, but it has a lot of ends on it, which is really important to me for arrangements because I will not plant this probably in one whole chunk. I'll take it all apart and I'll use it like one or two pieces or maybe three in a bunch at a time in an arrangement. So I can just cut them off and use them as cuttings. Um, that's probably the plan for this one. I've got three little four inch cacti and I do not know the varieties of these. So sorry, you guys, if you know them, let us know in the comment section. I mean, I could probably do some um, like research and I could find it pretty easy, but I haven't done that yet. And then we've got a Zort Cop Aeonium. I wanted this for the color because, oh, look at that. That contrast is awesome. And then the last thing, which is actually what I went down to the garden center for. So these two things were the only things that I was after, was this pot and these three sedum. This is Aureum sedum, and I love it because of how delicate, like my fingers are not delicate, but you can see like the difference in size here. Like it's pretty nuts. It's a really pretty like fairy, fairy type of sedum. And that's not what's happening in here. I'm not doing a fairy garden. So also a zone four hardy to negative 30, three inches tall, 15 inch is wide. Bright yellow flowers, late spring. But this is what it looked like in an unheated greenhouse out at the garden center. Looks really great. So now I'm gonna repot the hellebores really quick in the two white containers. They do have plugs in the bottom. So I'm gonna remove those. It's really easy. They just push right out like, there we go. So now we have a drainage hole and I'm just using, like you saw, just the regular Espoma organic potting mix to pot these up. And then I'll talk a little bit about the care of them because I know they're gonna start showing up at the garden centers and I do get quite a number of questions about if it's okay to plant and can you keep them inside and all sorts of things like that. So I'll address some of those uh, questions. Right, there they are all done and I think they look so sweet and just so fresh and I'm gonna try to get some better pictures because I realize it probably looks a little bit dark because the Sun is like in front of us it's behind them so it always kind of makes them look a little shadowed um, but I used a natural colored Spanish moss to top dress the soil in this can and then I used a really pretty bright green Spanish moss in this one and I like them both. Like, I think they're both really, really pretty. I'll show you the bag. So this is the bag of the bright green stuff. This is preserved Spanish moss. Um, you get a huge bag of it for like $6. And I just emptied out the natural colored bag. That's all I had left of that one. So the hellebores will probably stay up here because the conditions are right to keep the plants happy. And then I lined everything else up next to it just so we could see everything one more time. And everything looks pretty on this bench, I think which is actually just a cobbled together thing. I think these pieces are from different companies even. Like I picked up these two pillars and then the bench top is from a completely different set that goes with pillars that I have inside. But it all uh, goes, like it looks really pretty and it's an excellent plant stand out here. And I did bring my watering can out as well. This is the copper one from Gardner Supply so that I could water these in when I was done. 
Um, so all of this stuff from here over is going to a different location. So these will get to just shine all on their own. Hellebores are such an interesting plant and they're one of my favorites out in the garden. In fact, I started a collection last year and I'm hoping to add to it every year um, because they are a plant that blooms when nothing else is. I mean, maybe you have a witch hazel out in your garden and they're blooming at kind of the same time, but these just come up in like adverse conditions. There might be snow on the ground and these things will still come up and bloom. In more mild climates, they typically will bloom in like December. Um, in harsher climates, like typically in my zone five, they're blooming sometime end of January, maybe February. We did put together a whole care guide on hellebores, but I think I geared it more toward taking care of hellebores outside. I don't think I really addressed what to do with them as a house plant. I don't think. We will link the video down below if you want to learn a little bit more. But typically as a house plant, I wouldn't consider these like something that you could keep inside all year round and keep them happy because these, they like it when it's cold. That's when they put on their huge show. Um, so typically you'll see these come out this time of year because this is the time they're blooming. So this is the time that they can sell. Um, they sell the best when they're blooming. Um, so if you're picking one up at a grocery store or whatever and your ground is still frozen, you can definitely keep it inside. You'll just want to find a spot that doesn't get super warm. So if you have a drafty entryway or like an unheated sun porch, like this one right here, like it gets pretty cool in here at night. It might heat up a little bit in the day, but it does stay a lot cooler than it is inside. So the plant will stay quite a bit happier. And then if you have an event and you wanna bring out the beautiful plant and put it on your coffee table or a dining table or in a bathroom or something like that, just to brighten it up, you can do that and then just pick it up and put it back in its cool spot. They also don't like a ton of water. You wanna make sure that they, that you let them dry out a little bit, but not to the point of wilting, <laughs> kinda of like most other plants. You just wanna keep your eye on them and just like be um, diligent not to overwater. And then if you start noticing some yellowing leaves, that pretty much in the case of hellebores means that you need to move it to a colder spot. And I think even if you don't have a super cool spot in your house, typically if you're keeping a plant inside for just a matter of months until the soil thaws out and you can acclimate your plant to being outside, they'll usually hang on. And they may look bad by the time you put them outside, but most of the time they're okay. You put them in the ground and they flush back with new growth. So I think they're a great thing to buy this time of year because they bring such a bright pop and they're not like your typical daffodils and tulips, which I also love um, and I also buy those, but I think it's fun to have something that's a little bit different. So when the weather starts to heat up in the spring and you feel like you can get out and maybe do some planting, um, you can start acclimating your hellebores as you would with any other house plants that you're gonna put outside or when you're hardening off seedlings, you put them out in the day, you increase the amount of time you put them out every day, bring them in at night, and then eventually you can leave them out day and night. It's usually a pretty quick process, a lot quicker with these than as opposed to seedlings that are just really fragile baby plants. These usually have a pretty good root system and it doesn't take quite as long. And like I said, if you've had some really great success with hellebores inside, let us know in the comment section. Um, I've tried several times. We've tried down at the garden center um, and you know maybe we just didn't have it cool enough, but I think that these are gonna be really happy up here. So now I'm going to run you guys outside and show you what the hellebores in their native environment, what they look like. So it's pretty breezy out here. I hope that the audio isn't horrible, but you could see what they look like after they spent all winter out here. They're not horrible. Some of the leaves are kind of ratty. You know, they need to be cleaned up, which I'll do a little bit later, but they are starting to push some buds. These are called pink frost. I've got six of them planted in this little area and they are absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait. Like, okay, so just remember what this looks like. And in about a month, I'm gonna show it to you again and it's gonna look completely different. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. That's my little garden center haul and my thoughts on hellebores as houseplants. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. All right, Russell, are you gonna stay here? Looks like you're here for the long haul. Oh, to be a cat.